Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. What a beautiful day it is here in Central Florida. I hope it's the same wherever you are. And definitely fall is in the air. My favorite time of year, Ball. Well, in fact, my favorite holiday is Thanksgiving. Most people like Christmas better. I love Thanksgiving. But anyway, it's the best time of the year. And it's, I think both the word Thanksgiving and Christmas can be interpreted family. That's the best time of the year, getting the family together. Well, if you've been with us, I've got Jody Matthews all week. What we did, I brought her in and made five interviews because she's got five interviews worth of information. In fact, much more. She wrote the book, Revelation Simply Put, and it, that's exactly what that book is. And I really believe that if you've been following it and you've often been a little bit confused about the book of Revelation, I think she's making it very clear to those of us who need just, just the basic understanding. So this is the third interview today. And uh, on this one, we talked about the rapture and the second coming. There's so many different big events in Revelation. And so we're trying to hit them with a little bit more detail. And you're really going to enjoy this conversation today. I know you will. So um, before we do that, though, we have to cook, don't we? We're going to fix pumpkin caramel cupcakes. Need I say more? It's fall. You'll do pumpkin recipes. And um, so I want to again remind you that we are viewer supported. And I so appreciate your faithfulness to this program. Um, hope that the Lord will enable you to keep it up and we'll, we'll keep going here because we got to just really emphasize to America and beyond how important the family is and how important the daddies and the mamas are and the way it all functions together. That's what we're all about. So um, if you want to use your credit card, there's a number there for you, 1-800-229-0059. Or write to me at Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Cannot ever express how much we appreciate your donations, of course, but also those sweet, sweet notes of encouragement. They mean so much in a world that is so on high speed, accelerated to the floor. It's refreshing when somebody takes the time to write a note. God bless you for that. Now... Here we are. So you said fall is in the air. What that means here in Florida, instead of my car reading 106 when I go out in the afternoon, mm -hmm. it read 92. So <laughs> Yeah, and uh, that's chilly for us. Well. So, you know what I was thinking before, because we're using a prepared cake mix. Mm -hmm. cake mix and a prepared topping. I believe with all my heart, when I was a little girl, there was nothing prepared. Mm. No, you guys I, did I everything don't think, from scratch. I don't think Bisquick was, had been invented. Mm -hmm. So God bless all you people. Yes. Make okay. our lives easier. Okay. So I have a yellow cake mix, and I have a can of pumpkin. We're going to mix those mm -hmm. together first. I have three eggs. And I you know, there have been times on this program when I wanted to start pumpkin recipes, and the stores didn't have the pumpkin yet. And and supposedly there's a shortage this year, too. So if, when you go out, if you find pumpkin, get get a few cans. I don't well, know that, why there's a pumpkin shortage. I have no explanation, well, except that it's 2020. That's my explanation right there. <laughs> yes, that's a good one. But also, when you have weather problems in yes. different parts of the country yes. and certain... Food stuffs grow yep. in those. I think the best food comes out of like Michigan and places like that. Okay. And Northern California. That is the richest soil in the world. So I wish you'd get it fixed so you quit burning up everything out there. Three eggs. Please do that. <laughs> I'm just continuing with I'm the on a tangent, so. <laughs> Two thirds cup water. And then we have maple syrup. All kinds of... Oh, uh, my goodness. A quarter cup maple syrup. All kinds of additions. Yes. Four tablespoons of cinnamon and sugar and a pinch of salt. Now, listen. If you don't have all this other stuff in your pantry, you can take the egg mix and the pumpkin, and you can mix those together and make cupcakes. You don't need anything else. You, you need the... 
You need the cake thing. The cake mix cake and the pumpkin. pumpkin. That's it. Yes. You can mix those two ingredients together. You got and it. Have, but this makes it more rich. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to mix these together. And it makes and this makes a huge batch and it, it does make 24 good sized cupcakes. And they come out very very pretty. Yes. Because I made a mess over here. Look at those. They're, they're lovely. They're perfect. Yes. Um, but also the thing that prompted my thinking about there were nothing prepared is that our frosting is prepared. Yeah, and Perfect. it's a caramel dip that you get in the fruit and vegetable section of your grocery store. Yeah. So um, for the busy, busy, uh, do you ever do this? You just put it on like that? Yeah, just do that. My husband loves that caramel dip with apples. That's one of his um, evening snacks. Well, I'm... Uh, Oh, this I smells think, so good. I would think that would um, be a perfect combination. I'll, I think I got some apples up in my office. Yeah, that would be a great combination. Now, see, look how easy that is. Yeah, and you could melt that a little bit more and just drizzle. Mm-hmm. But it, it is a nice consistency for, for, for yeah. frosting. So yes. Now, I may I or may that. not have eaten some of this batter this morning. Maybe. God and I'm going to tell you, it was delicious. This is good. <laughs> Yeah, that is good. You want me to try the cupcake real quick? Yes. Okay. Arthelene has some gentle things going on, so I'm mm -hmm. the taster. Ooh, those are soft. Do, does it need more frosting? I think it does. It, well, no, not right now, because I have to take one bite, and then I have to leave the room. That's all. <laughs> I'm trying to be good, and we just made pasta. and. <laughs> oh, that really looks good. Mm -hmm. That tells you that... There are no words. Well, that tells you that the holidays are on the road. When you get the pumpkin out... Oh, my gosh. Mm. So, so good. Oh, right. This I is think the we'll winner. make the crew happy today. Yes, for mm -hmm. sure. I think you want this recipe yes, because um, this is such a treat for your family. And you mm -hmm. put a few little fall decorations out and fix this. It, it really... Really change the atmosphere. It yes. doesn't take Let's rocket science the atmosphere. at all. Atmosphere. Let's change the 2020 yes. atmosphere. Yes, yes. Do Make it. your home like it's not 2020. Yes. Okay. All right. If you would like this recipe, uh, information to get that is coming up on your screen. And I hope you've been listening to Jody. But if you just start hearing her today, it's going to be worthwhile. So uh, choose the way you want the recipe, and I'll be back later. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Well, she's back, or she's still here. <laughs> Thanks, Jody, for for your time. Um, I love being here. I think you know if you have a home show and you talk about family and raising kids, mm -hmm. that the Book of Revelation isn't exactly the kind of thing you would bring in, <laughs> but uh, you make it simple. And uh, our nation is in such an upheaval, and indeed the world is. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people just asking questions, which I feel you're answering. Uh, this book has been out four or five years, hasn't it? Oh yes, yes. yes. Helping um, many of people, I, I've gotten a lot of wonderful lot feedback, more and I thank everyone right for that. Right now, yes. when it first came out, and I thank God that He didn't leave anything really not up to our imagination. He wrote it down. He wrote it down, and sometimes we need people like Jody to kind of unpack it and explain it to us. But um, so glad that um, He sent her to us. And I always like to mention uh, because we have new viewers every time. We will have the website up. You can get the book through that. Uh, Barnes & Noble, Amazon. Uh, I think it's one that you will really enjoy having, one you can understand about the book of Revelation. It has illustrations. And uh, also, uh, you can tell she's a great speaker, so uh, she would probably be a blessing to your church, and you can reach her through that website and all that. Okay, I want to talk about the rapture of the church. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm a preacher's kid, and I remember going to bed at night as a little girl. <laughs> yes. I wonder if Jesus will come tonight. And I don't think there's a whole lot of that going on right now. 
uh, mm. we preached about heaven, we sang about heaven, and we there was a lot of sermons about Jesus coming back. In fact, I have this wonderful brother-in-law in heaven, but he was a great preacher. Yeah and pastored a large church, one in Canada and also uh, when he moved to the United States in the city of Des Moines. One night he preached a sermon on what to do if you miss the rapture. Mm. And if you think that's la-la land, it's not. It's very good information. You can't believe the cassettes they sold on that sermon. You oh, know, wow. you used to be able to buy this pastor's sermon uh, yes, on cassette. by cassette. Yep. Yeah, there's other Before ways technology. now, but, but that was when the cassette, and those were going out all over the nation. And it wasn't a foolish title, it's true. For sure. So what, what is your uh, advice if somebody misses the rapture? They learned about it when they were young. For sure. <clears throat> they learned about accepting Christ, and they didn't, but they knew about the rapture. Yes. And then it happened, and they're still here. Yes. Okay, here we are. Here we go. Let's make this simple. I dedicate a chapter to the rapture. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to go there because it's a big piece of the puzzle. And the rapture is seen in, as two distinct events. Most people confuse the second coming with the rapture. Right. Well, uh, on page 123 of my book, I have what is called the secret coming. That's the rapture. Let's make it simple. And then the second coming. So this is where you have a big thing with blue pieces. You have to see where do these two blue pieces fit. One is the sky, one is the sea. One is going to happen in heaven, in the sky. One is going to happen on earth. Understand this, Arfling. First off, I want to put this before we get to what to do if, you're, if you miss the rapture. The rapture is one of the most comforting events in history. Do you know most Christians haven't heard it that way, though? You know what everybody say? Ha! Huh, you're left behind. <laughs> and look, they tell it to all the same. You're going to be left behind. Got a lot of books on that. <laughs> and so it's amazing. And, and, and I love the books, I, and, and, and I understand that. But understand this. When you go to that passage of Scripture, because I want to know what's, what's up with this left behind thing. When I went to the Scripture found in 1 Thessalonians, that's what we're talking about, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to, through 18, when God's come from heaven with the trump of God, which is separate from the seven trumpets, which also does not identify a political figure. The trump of God, that's in English, but in the Hebrew or in the Greek, it is called a shofar. So really, no political figure is named right there in that passage. It is called, when he comes from the shofar, blows the shofar, the dead in Christ is going to rise. And then he says, those who are alive in Christ, those of us who believe in Christ, you, I, everybody mm -hmm. here in this studio are believers, people at your church. Mm -hmm. God says, I'm bringing you up too. We are meeting Christ in the air, which is called raptus mm -hmm. in the Greek, correct? And guess what? At the end of that verse, Paul said, now comfort everyone with these words. Where did we get scare everyone mm -hmm. with this, these words? So the rapture is a most comforting event in history. It is an event that has never happened in history, just like in the book of Genesis, it had never rained and people had never seen rain. So God says it's something that we're not familiar with, but he allowed Paul to write about it to comfort us, to let us know mm -hmm. you're going to be taken out. Why? Because the saints do not endure the wrath of God. Understand this. Yes, we go through tribulation caused by man. The saints do not endure the wrath of God. You know why? Guess who took our wrath? On the cross. On the cross. Over 2,000 years ago. That's why we praise him. That's why I get excited about Christ. Christ mm -hmm. did a magnificent thing. So Christ said, I'm coming to take the saints, those who believe in me, out of the earth before seven years kick off. All we know is that's going to happen, right? Now, if you are left behind. Let me stop you just one second. Go ahead. There are people who believe he'll come before the tribulation, in the middle of the tribulation, at the end of the tribulation, <laughs> and they're sitting in their living rooms right now saying, hmm. <laughs> so in my book, I explain that, yeah. and I say get the missing pieces and put them in the right place. So, and, and, and there are my brethren, well, you know, you, you know, some of us got to be purified. Christ did all my purification on the cross. 
That is that is the that is the greatness of the salvation that was wrought on our behalf. And I deal with the three time is we fight about the timing of it. Mm -hmm. But I tell everyone once I studied it, the pieces just don't fit. So I just tell go ahead and read the book. And I even have a YouTube channel. I do different things where we can go through it together and comb through. We'll study God's word together. Mm -hmm. So that that could be that's the mid trip. That of is you. Kind, yeah, that's kind of uh, not major at all. But the, it, it's it a is. little bit of a divisive thing. In, it is in the family. So I tell so. everybody, that's why that's in this book, and I graciously talk about all three views, and then I say, once you examine it, let's see where you're going to put the blue pieces and see where they fit, because God ain't trying to confuse us. The Bible fits together just like this. I heard it put this way one time, a little crudely, but <laughs> uh -huh. God's not going to beat us up before he comes to get he us. He sure <laughs> isn't. He sure, it doesn't, wait a minute, it just goes against all scripture if you read the word for mm -hmm. yourself. So that's the importance of it. we're not going to fuss it. about that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But what to do if you're left after, and some people even have this thought too, if you're, if you miss the rapture, you cannot be saved. That's not true. Yes, and that's what I want to talk about on this. You really. will be able to be <laughs> saved. Did you not know? I explained this on page 124. And we Maybe we can have time to get into it. Maybe not. All right. You might come, come to my YouTube channel. There are actually eight raptures in the Bible. The church is the fourth one on the plate. The first rapture was Enoch in the book of Genesis. To rapture means to take out. He, it says he walked with God. He was no more. God took him. Second one was Noah. Noah was a type of rapture. When he got in the ark, God brought him above so that he would not endure. He would have brought more if people just believed, but only eight people were saved. That was a type. He lifted him type up above rapture, yeah. all what's going on. The third one, Elijah. Mm -hmm. The church is the fourth one on the plate. Then after we are raptured, God is going to do three more raptures. The great multitude found in Revelation chapter 7, verse 14, the 144,000 witnesses, and then the two witnesses. The Bible says after they're killed, they're going to be raptured up to heaven. Wait a minute, in front of everybody, and everybody's going to have their phone saying, do you see this? <laughs> now, look at this, and it's amazing because God explains that. But why do God rapture them up? Well, according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10, anybody who is in Christ is not subject to the wrath of God. And God tells us in the book of Revelation, I believe it's chapter 14, but you, you can read, check my book or check the Word of God, because I put the Bible in, in also in the book. We put all the verses. The publisher was great with that. Chapter 14 tells us, um, as we deal with the rapture, that uh, God is going to, uh, when he brings everybody up as he's taking different people, uh, different groups up to heaven. Nobody is subject to his wrath. Mm -hmm. No one in Christ is subject to his wrath. But it also tells us where do salvation end? Because God is gracious all the way to the very end. Where does it end? He said an angel is going to be proclamating the gospel during the tribulation. It's going to be some unnatural things, folks, not what we see in now. It's going to be, it's going to get even worse. And it's going to be saying to those who take the mark of the beast, Too late. you will not mm -hmm. come into heaven. So it's going to be a lot going on. People are going to be getting the mark of the beast. He says, do not, whatever you do, don't take the mark of the beast. Guess what? During the tribulation, if you are left behind, you're don't more than likely it. going to be martyred. Revelation chapter 6, Don't it says there's a plenty Don't. of souls. Mm -hmm. You know why? Plenty of souls are going to be under the altar because they were martyred. Because, and, and the Bible tells us there's going to be a lot of people saying, I'm not taking that mark. They're going to come to their senses. Grandma was right. <laughs> Christ, <laughs> wait a minute, Christ is real. And so when you don't take it, you more than likely, because death will go up 90% during the tribulation period. Be it's gonna, Jody was right. <laughs> yeah, and look, grab my book. It's going to give you instructions all the way through. Jody was right. I saw her on Home Keepers. <laughs> So that's what we tell you. Whatever you do, don't take that mark of the beast. Do mm -hmm. not get that in your hand. Be killed for Christ. You become a martyr for Christ, just like we are now. When people make fun of us, when people say, oh, those loony Christians, and they think God is going to do this, and God is going to prove them right. He's going to say, mm -hmm. I, I am going to do that. And I protect my... Revelation is one of the most comforting books to all the saints. What makes it so crazy is because God tells us everything that's going to happen mm -hmm. to the sinner and to the saint. Mm -hmm. And you all know God do flip sides of everything. Mm -hmm. To the sinner and to the saint. The power of God, the power of the cross to the saint is power to us. To the sinner is a stumbling block. That's, That's why right. when we read Revelation, it is comforting to us. We find out in chapter 4 and 5, we mm -hmm. end up in heaven just like John. John mm -hmm. said, before you knew it, I was in heaven and I was seeing things and God was giving him what? 
unveiling all of what's going to happen on the earth when you're in heaven. Could you uh, could you quickly define what's going on? I mean, I, I think the world is pretty much in chaos right now, but yes. it's nothing next to the tribulation. Could you could you just define some of the things going on during that tribulation time period? During that time period, it's going to be the time that God. It, seven years, that's why you keep seeing those, is going to be the time that the Antichrist tried to take over the world. It will be the last seven years of history in this age as we know it. Because we also enter into a new age called the Millennium Kingdom of Christ, where Christ will come back and have the Millennium Reign of Christ. It's going to be glorious, you, you guys. But during the tribulation period, that's mm -hmm. where you have the seven bowls, the seven trumpets, and the seven seals unlocked. And the Bible says the first person on the onset, the man riding that white horse, is not Christ because he comes with a Stephanos crown. He, do, he doesn't come with the crown that Christ has in Revelation chapter 19. The Antichrist is coming on the world to try and take over. Isn't that what Satan has been trying to do to take mm -hmm. over the world? It's going to be, uh, Jesus tells us in Luke chapter 21. He says, men are going to be looking up to the sky saying, what is going on? Yes, the sea is going to turn to blood. The church is not going to be here, those of us who are in Christ. Yes, uh, you're going to see a number of biological warfare. Folks, you haven't seen biological warfare. Also, the world will be getting ready for Armageddon, Revelation chapter 16, verse 16. Folks, we are going to go back we're in a period of social distancing. That's how come I know this period isn't in. God says, let me tell you where everything ends. The world doesn't end with COVID. The world ends at Armageddon. It over in Israel. I've been over there too, and I've seen the field. And then it's seven year period. It, during the seven year period. And it's it, and really look at this. It's humanity's relationship with God. And these are the people who says, I'm not dealing with God. I don't want God. I don't want to deal with him. In fact, I'm going to fight against God. There are going to be all types of demonic spirits that take over humanity's heart. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be sad. They're going to try and fight against Christ. And guess mm -hmm. what? When Christ returns during the second coming, mm -hmm. we talked about the rapture, which happens right at the beginning. Jesus comes back at the end with his saints. Mm -hmm. That's us. We would have been in heaven, gotten rewarded and all of that. We come back with Christ. We don't even have to fight in the war when he comes back to Jerusalem. Guess what mountain he comes on? Right there, the same mountain he left on, his feet will touch Mount, Mount Olives. Olives. God gives the exact place where Jesus will come back. You see, he don't even come back to America. He's mm -hmm. over there in Jerusalem. He comes back. The mountain splits in two and Jesus mm -hmm. goes and saves Israel who is hidden in Petra Revelation chapter 12. Mm -hmm. So it's just going to be some unnatural things. Even when Jesus comes back, he's going to turn all dead seas. He's going to make them back living. Man is going to be able to live up to age 1,000 years old. Guess what? Jesus is going to spend one and day on the earth. we're going to look like we're 30. We're going to look like we are 30 years old. I tell all the celebrities, you ought to be following Christ right now because <laughs> you don't have to do, go through any surgeries or anything. He's going to make this world beautiful. That's when we shall have a harmonious, peaceful government because Isaiah tells us the government would sit on Jesus' on shoulders. shoulders. And that's a real thing. We keep thinking, oh, that's symbolism. Christ said, no, the government, he's going to take over Homeland Security. Guess who's going to be bound for 1,000 years? That's where that scripture fit in. Satan will be bound for 1,000 years. So that means there won't be havoc or craziness and in the earth. We don't homeland security. No homeland security. Jesus said, no. I'm, and then it's going to be justice. Jesus is going to rule from Jerusalem sitting on his father's throne. That didn't happen when he came the first time. Second mm -hmm. time, when he comes back the second time, yeah. And guess what? The saints going to be in charge. All of us, because we get rewarded in heaven for how we have been living but our lives down to, here. We're going to live and, and operate. I mean, I could be a governor. Oh, you sure can. Yeah. Depending on how well you live this life, that's where the oh, parable fits in. Maybe at. that's a problem. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> look, for all of us, we don't know what reward we're well, going to get, the governor of South get Dakota is a preacher's kid, and so am I. So maybe you I'll like have that, my chance Kathleen. in the millennium. I've always uh, been very interested in politics. And I think that God is going to, and God is interested in politics. Let me make this one last thing too, since we're in an election year, just so the saints don't get distracted. God is neither Republican nor Democratic. Guess what? He's theocratic. He says, I rule, he is. not he man. Is. 
man is Gentile. Jesus Christ said, look, I'm theocratic. Theo means God. Everything needs to be under my rule. Yeah, that's Simply shocking. <laughs> That'd be shocking to the Republicans shocking, and Democrats. <laughs> shocking uh, to know that God is not really attached to either party. We are out of time, but she'll be back uh, with us on the next program. And um, there's a couple more things I want to talk about okay. as far as I'm kind of maybe back up a little bit Please. and uh, really hone in a little bit more on that Antichrist. So. <sighs> Um, just cool your jets. We'll do it later because we've got to leave right now. <laughs> I'll be back, uh, but Jody will be with us on the next program. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Isn't this great? I can't tell you how much I'm enjoying uh, watching these interviews myself. And I was just thinking, if uh, you're a mom and you've got some younger children, I'm not talking about toddlers, but have family altered, that would be a great book for you to get because... It, you could read that and explain it on the level that a child, teenager could understand. And what a jump start that would give them as a Christian living their life to understand that book of Revelation. Because a lot of people have stumbled over it, but she makes it so plain. And so I hope that you have gotten her website. The name of the book is Revelation Simply Put, and you can get it through other venues like um, Amazon and so forth. And she will be on the next program, so uh, don't miss it. But she can sure deliver it to make it so interesting and understanding and exciting. So let me remind you that everything she's talking about is true. It will come to pass. And it's a good thing to know, to know what's in that book of Revelation. Because when we live in a world that is just getting more and more upset uh, people are at each other, and there's so much division around the world. That's what's going to happen before he comes. And so our business is to know about it and to live in such a way that what's happening here doesn't really matter that much because his will be, will be done. It will come to pass. There will be a rapture. There is a heaven. And as believers, we've got everything to look forward to. Got everything to be excited about. So I know you'll want to join me next time, but until then, remember, there's no higher calling than that of a home keeper. God bless you. If you should miss a home keeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN programs and then on home keepers.